Anyways, hello and happy Tuesday again. Uh, I am Ryan Block, the curator of this fantastic show called The Open Heart Collective, where we take a raw, real live look at mental health through amazing people like Jeff who share their stories. Now, throughout the next hour tonight, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to hear Jeff's story as much or as little as he decides to share. Then we're going to look at, okay, what were some of those specific obstacles or moments of darkness that he had to overcome and what he did to overcome them? And then last but certainly not least, we're going to find out what's exciting in his world right now. Because oftentimes when we're having to talk around mental health, the conversation stops at the struggle or the conversation stops at the darkness. And in order to give hope and uplift those who are coming up behind us, we need to know that there's something more than just the darkness. So with no further ado, Jeff, welcome to the Open Heart Collective, my man. Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much for having me. This is actually an honor. I love everything you've been doing. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of your past lives and podcasts. Um, actually, I got to get connected on the Facebook live side of it because I usually just tune in on Instagram. So what's, what's the, how, do the, how do people find you on Facebook? Where is that? Uh, so yeah, just uh, Philip Ryan Block on Facebook. Yeah, because that's kind of your bigger uh, audience over there, right? Um, it depends. So a little bit of background on how the show works. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're a little frozen on Facebook, on Instagram, but we'll, it'll pick back up. Um, so how, how this whole show works is while we broadcast live on Facebook over here and on Instagram up here, we know that the Instagram video, unfortunately, mm -hmm. will go away in 24 hours, right? Facebook one will, will stay forever. But you're like, oh, I don't really like Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. So how else do I pay attention to the show? Right? Well, I will take this video that's on the Facebook feed and then put it up on YouTube for all of you guys who are YouTube fans. And then I will also take the audio form of the video and upload it through my partners over at Anchor. Not sponsored. Want to be though. Uh, <laughs> And I'll upload the audio there, and then that way people who listen to audio podcasts on Apple or Anchor or on uh, Spotify can check it out there, too. Awesome. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Content distribution strategy, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. But the show is not about me. The show is about Jeff tonight. So introduce yourself. Give us your story. Yeah, so uh, I'm Jeff the Entrepreneur. I, I used to say JeffJCunningham.com. Always trying to market it. Um, yeah, so literally uh, I'm just uh, – a kid chasing my dreams and trying to inspire others always to chase theirs. Um, about three years ago now, my older brother, um, that, that's kind of what inspired my, my uh, mission, my dream, uh, when, uh, uh, when everything happened then. So, um, yeah, so three years ago, my older brother, Jay, uh, me and him were going to build a coffee shop music studio. And, uh, we wrote out the dream on a napkin and, um, Two days after that, we wrote it out. I went to wake him up to get a haircut, actually. Uh, and he passed away on drugs, fentanyl. And um, it shelled me. And uh, it was probably one of the toughest things. Aside from my mom passing away when I was 12, uh, that was definitely one of the like most uh, tragic things. But as we both know, and especially you give an audience to you, through pain, you can find your purpose. And uh, right. kind of what happened out of that whole event. Wow. Any any chance, real quick, I didn't mean to cut that off. Anywhere you can turn down the phone volume. Yeah, it's because right. people on Instagram are hearing an echo. Yeah, so let me do this. I think it's because this is not actually let's do this. So I have it as down as I can. Can I mute this on here? Let's see. Oh no, I can do the phone volume like this. There we go. Ah. There we okay. go. All right, we got All it. All right. I'm still hearing a little bit about myself, but we'll work through it. Let me see. <laughs> Technological glitches. I think it's tearing you through here. The phone is picking you up through here, you know? Through the computer? Yeah. So oh. go through the Instagram audio and then get rid of this, you know? I would just turn the volume down on your computer then. Right. So I'll turn it down on here. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll turn this Yeah, up. that should be good. Delay. Yeah, I'm not hearing it anymore. All right, let me put the volume back up here. All right, well, we could have turned the volume down on the phone and then we're not there. But either way, we're going to make it work and everybody's going to hear everything and there's not going to be any weird echo. Because as long as I can hear you and as long as you guys can hear us, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that addresses the problem. All right. So 
I mean, that that's a heavy way to start it out, right? So your, your brother passed away, and um, I'm sorry to hear that, by the way. I, I mean, I knew that. Like, I followed your story for a little while now. And um, whenever you lose somebody, especially to drugs, to suicide, to – it, it it definitely is a tragic moment and my heart breaks for you, man. Um, so what was, tell me about childhood. Give, let's go back a, a little ways and kind of get a, a little bit of a more, this is a bigger picture on who Jeff is Yeah, so before, actually, before that moment. Yeah, that's actually a good point. So um, it's funny that now I, I'm on Instagram as Jeff the Entrepreneur. I bought jefftheentrepreneur.com because through this whole version, I found my life purpose. And it's really to be an entrepreneur through and through. And back when I was young, uh, when my brother was alive, when my mom was alive, we were actually outside, um, just like Gary V like selling lemonade. And I had my brother and sister um, advertising as we used to sell lemonade when I had to be about 11 years old, right? And I always was like selling stuff when I was younger and always had a, uh, had a passion for business. It turned into ice cream stand. But that was really when I was young. And then I had this thing of when people told me I couldn't do something, like I always want to play football. Uh, I yeah. wanted to play in football. Um, and my older brother, Jay, he wound up going, he was a rebellious kid and he wound up going and playing football for a, a behavioral school. And I thought he was the coolest thing ever. I was pulled out uh, because he got into trouble back when he was older. And um, I was homeschooled, but I still want to play quarterback. And uh, even though people said I was too small and everything, uh, I still kind of ignored everybody. Want to play quarterback? Um, <laughs> and yeah, and then that 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 transitioned with everything I've done. Kind of anything someone's told me that I wasn't able to do. Um, my dad used to talk about how there was dream stealers, right? But anybody who would tell me I couldn't do something, they were dream motivators, you know then I would do it. And uh, right. yeah, so when I was younger, man, I, I definitely always had the entrepreneurial spirit and a lot of the tendencies, but I never knew that was it. I kind of just came a, a victim of uh, the system and the people I was around. I mean, that, that that's a common narrative, right? Being a victim of the system, being a victim of the of family dynamic, being a victim of limitations, being, a, I mean, this is something that we hear a lot on the show is being limited by circumstance, being limited by family dynamic, being limited by all these different things. So uh, again, it's proof that no matter what you guys are struggling with, you're not alone because everybody else is kind of going through it too. So, um, but yeah. at the same time, even though I was younger, I think the limitations were, were like, I'm in America, man. Like there, there were limitations I put on myself. As soon as I woke up and, and became aware of it, now I realize I can do anything, uh, do what I want to do, and um, really just really just chase uh, what I want with the passion and 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 pursue. And that even happened, dude. When um I went out, I taught behavioral middle school. Like my first job was stop and shop. I actually got fired from my one of my jobs, Wendy's and Stop and Shop. And then I went up uh, okay. winding up. Um, at a horrible, my dad was, my mom passed away and my dad was going to, um, lose the house. So I quit college and playing football, um, to work for a molding company that I hated, uh, to help him keep the house. Can you hear me? Okay. Or no? Yeah, I got, I got you. I was just, I was just managing the audio levels on my end. That's okay. All. So, so then what happened was one day when I was out still practicing to become quarterback, cause I actually, I threw kind of funny. I didn't throw like, um, because I never played quarterback. You, you got know? that they, Matthew Stafford throw on huh? the little sidearm one, huh? It was actually it was more of a Tebow throw. So they actually called me. <laughs> they called okay. me um, the coach that didn't want me to play. The offensive coordinator, Jim Peak, is his name. Um, just like Michael Jordan had some guy who cut him from the team. He showed me on the roster that I was the number four quarterback and I didn't have a spot on the team. And he and then he called me Tebow. It was right around when uh, I don't know how much you watch football, but Tebow got drafted by the Broncos. Right. And he called it as a thing. And it's funny how your mind is so powerful. My mind, because of Tebow, I actually played worse in practice when he called it to me. I would skip balls on the ground. I started throwing way worse, right? My younger mm -hmm. brother, Josh, um, helped me fix my throwing motion. But just anybody throwing your motion, it kind of just changes and you're not really the same. Right. Um, anyway, it wound up when Tebow started winning and I saw on the games that him started winning and our quarterback got hurt, I actually went in. And because of the the, the, the association with Tebow winning, I brought the team back and was able to win. And I actually own the name still on Facebook as J. Tebow Cunningham from all those <laughs> wins coming. And actually, so then when I was younger at the time. I'm 34 now, but that was all like during college. So even if it was uh, 
you know, last shot at Bear Pong. It was Tebow time and I was hitting it, you know? So uh, took that, but it just shows you how powerful your mind is, right? So Tebow, yeah. I, I know, associated with such a guy who couldn't throw and I couldn't throw. And then when I saw him winning clutch, then in practice, I started winning in clutch because I associated Tebow with the winning thing, right? Right. Association is a wonderful thing when it works. Yeah. So this this was just still some of the entrepreneurial stuff. Um, you know, I had the lemonade stand when I was young and I was told I couldn't pick up a quarterback. I actually left uh, the molding job to teach behavioral middle school when I was practicing throwing, getting ready. I was practicing throwing footballs into, um, uh, what is it? A basketball hoop at a, a four. Some kids showed up that were, and I was doing it. I was, I was pretty accurate. I was throwing them all the way across that right into the hoop. Right. Um, mm -hmm. some kids showed up and one of my buddies who I used to, uh, used to play for the local high school was like, Hey, you want to throw routes with the kids? I did. It turned into me then working at a job, um, similar to, do you know, Ed my lettuce? Yeah. Yeah. So similar to Ed Milet's story where he worked with uh, young uh, young boys and it just changed his life. Um, mm -hmm. I, I saw a lot at that school. These behavioral kids were a lot like my older brother who just didn't have a mom, didn't have a dad, had the whole thing. And really, I took the job just to get out of the molding job, even though I paid less because um, I was miserable doing it. And it, that job changed my life because it actually gave me the passion to educate. Uh, inspire and help kids who are actually hurting. I thought it was a training ground to help me then one day um, take my brother back and help him. So while right. I was at that job, uh, I actually got rom romantically involved with a, a teacher named Jackie. She was the head teacher girl. Um, got got kind of in trouble. It was, it's a long story. She actually wound up getting engaged. It was bad. Me and her still hooked up. Um, and, uh, and, through the whole journey of that, um, which is, it's, it's the true story. She gets mad when I share it, but it definitely happened. Um, well that, at, at least y'all are still connected to this day and it's not like a, a negative thing. Yeah. Well, what was negative about it? So after that, she actually, when I raised my hand to become a lifeguard at the school, and this is one thing that's got to change my passion is to change the education system one day. Uh, she's like, we need lifeguards. Someone raise your hand. And I wrote, raised my hand. Okay. She goes, um, she laughed. She looks, you can't be a lifeguard. Right. And when she laughed, I was just like, it burned the fire in me. You know, the entrepreneur in me was like, I got to come back and, uh, and do that. You know? So I wound up, I, I wound up getting the pool and swimming at 6 AM and actually to complete becoming a lifeguard, I'm a lifeguard today. I had to do the save on her to, to get my lifeguard license. Right. She was huh. also the one who told me I couldn't become a teacher and that's why I became a teacher. Um, so, so, so basically your life is bucking the system. Yeah, no, just here's the thing. I believe I can do whatever I set my mind to. And when people tell me I can't do it, it gives the extra drive to do it, you know? Right, right. You're, so, you're, you're talking to the guy who started a record label in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, and is now doing this podcasting thing when I didn't do podcasts before. Like, so, and... I know all too well about the limitations that others put on you and how they can fuck with this, but then also light a fire. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. So you totally get, I know just me. I remember uh, us connecting and talking and your story inspires me. So I wound up, um, so at, while I was at the school teaching, um, back then it, it wound up then le learning to, um, that's when I was there, my older brother, Jay, um, mm -hmm. The one I talked about in the beginning, he actually right. married a Playboy model um, down in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Yeah, he lived the life. He was like that kid who lived the life, had everything. And uh, and she left him for a multimillionaire. And uh, so he was depressed. He had two kids, Olivia and Caden, great kids. Um, and he was babysitting. They're giving him money to babysit his kids and he was depressed. So I thought my life prepared me for the moment because I was working with all these behavioral school kids right. to then help Jay out. So I talked him to come up to Connecticut, which is where I'm at, and help him um, uh, with it. And when he came up to Connecticut, my sister was getting married. Um, we were going to um, – he talked about how he's been arrested and all that stuff. And he's like, you know, I got to build a, I got to build a business for myself. So we made a dream to build a coffee shop music studio, uh, which is going to be called Kokomo Jays. It's probably going to happen in Nashville, Florida, and Texas, right? And that's my right. why. That's 100% it. And then that was the dream that we wrote out on a napkin. Um, and then two days after is when he passed away. And um, it not only did he pass away, but I was still at the school. The girl I used to hook up with, Jackie, she reached out to me because our, one of our, our students, this kid Michael, he – my brother passed away. It was an accidental drug overdose. This a kid, Michael, it was uh, framed as a suicide, which happened right the same week. So I'm in the funeral home 
right after my brother passes away and then um, the student does. And then HR pulls me in the office and goes, hey, Jeff, um, you know, you've been talking to Jackie or something. There's a whole thing. I'm not going to get into all that, but they're like, um, you know, if you talk to her anymore, you're fired. And I said, well, fire me now because I don't care if I live anymore. They gave me, uh, because of that, uh, she, she gave me four therapy lessons to go to. So I go to these four therapy lessons uh, in the time. And I'm sure the lady was great. Her name's Joan. She was, she was really good. I was talking kind of just as fast as I talk now, right? And she said, well, well, she's an old lady. It's she's that East cool. Coast vibe, man. I get you, man. I get you. Yeah. She's like, you have uh, ADD, OCD, all this stuff. If you want to, and I told her my dream to do a coffee shop, you're going to need on some medication. So I said, okay. Now, I've, I'm not against medication. I saw uh, middle school students and for when it is, right? Uh, right. So I'll benefit them. So she gave me a piece of paper. Um, and she, she sent me to go home to, um, go to, uh, she sent me to go basically to go to sleep clinic because I actually went to the doctor and he said, you're fine. She said, no, no, you're not fine. You got to go to sleep clinic. They'll give you medication. So I went home to my dad. My dad wasn't good with advice. Uh, my dad wasn't good with money, but he was good with advice. As I come home with the paper to tell him, he goes, you know, Jeff, you've been through a lot. Your student died. This, you almost got fired. Your brother, he goes, um, Read this book. He gives me a book, Power of the Conscious Mind, right? He hands me the book. Um, mm -hmm. when, I, when I look at the book, I was the shell of the man I am today. I said to my dad, yeah, dad, okay, whatever. You know, I saw this funny video by this guy, Grant Cardone. So he shows me this two-minute Grant rant, right? <laughs> this is how I got all yeah. into Grant Cardone. I go home that day. It was an overcast, one of those days when if you're already depressed and you kind of lost stuff and it's like a great sky, you're just depressed. I'm a Jesus right. guy. I prayed, God, I don't care if I wake up. As I prayed that, I, I literally look over my phone. I search on my phone, Grant Cardone depression. I don't even know what made me search that. That video is what changed my life. The reason why I'm wearing a cash flow hat and I have more money in entrepreneur gene, I watched a video where Grant Cardone said, if Oprah did it, you can do it. Actually, Grant in that video mm -hmm. talked about having a threesome right at the thing. And for someone who's depressed, it actually like gets you like way, uh, like wakes you up. Right. And right. Uh, so I talked about having a threesome and I was just like, I'm listening to him. And then he, he talks all about medication, you know, and how th they say you need ADD and medication if you have the loss of a family member and this. So it really spoke to me. And then uh, I read his book, The 10X Rule Book. And I started, I, I used to teach photography at the middle school. And I left to start my first business, which is a photography business. And that's that's kind of where Interesting. I caught it all up through that. <laughs> okay. So that was a lot in the last, what, 20 minutes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 19 minutes. Um, so looking at that and knowing that there was all of these things that kept stacking up against you, right? Looking into those moments that were your dark times, your obstacles and what you've done to overcome them. What was some of those specific things that worked for you to kind of get yourself through that? Because I mean, I can only imagine what it's like. I mean, I've, I've lost people to, to, to drugs and alcohol over my life, and I know what it's like. I've had friends commit suicide. I, I've been there. I know what it's like when you're like, I'm just, I don't know what else to do. It's like, I'm just out of it. Like, I can't, there, there's no chance. There's no, not necessarily that there's no hope, but that it, it's a challenge to keep going because one of the things that, we don't really talk about it when you lose somebody like that is the trauma that you, the person who lost still feels. So what, what were some of the things that worked for you to kind of navigate through your own darkness? So, yeah, it's, it, this is the clearest thing. So anybody who's lost anybody love, I would say the biggest thing is talk about it. People don't want to talk about it, talk about it and share about it and, and know through the pain, you're not alone. People die. I wish everybody told us in life, people will die. You might die tomorrow. I might die tomorrow. Right. So I sure as hell hope now I got too much fucking work to do. Right. Not but impact up to but my whole point is if you really live, like it's all cliche. If people say live every day, like it's its last. Right. But but if you really then, um, if you really kind of do, it really puts in perspective that am I doing what I want to do through pain? Like Oprah was raped when she was young. She, she was black, right? She had no chance to be Oprah that she was, that she is now, right? She had everything stacked up against her and she did it. So if she can do it, then no matter who you've lost, where you've been, that through pain, you can find your purpose. And that's kind of what happened right. through pain. I found my purpose in there, you know, um, 
this whole dream, I, I actually went on a worthy eye goal. Success is the realiz realization of a worthy idea. Now the dream to build Kokomo Jays and throw myself all into work. And then learning that I was able to make money. Like people say, you know, whatever they want to say about money, man, um, we're on an economic planet. Money is really important to chase your dreams, whatever you're trying to do. Uh, and that's kind of what um, I realized that I was actually really good at was really making money. Um, and, and because of that, I set out a crazy goal to have 77 million. Me and my older brother actually set up this goal um, to make more. And the way where it came from was um, to, uh, the guy she left him for, he was worth like 74 million. And my brother was born in 77. So he's like, let's make 77 million a lifetime. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make 77 million. And then after I make 77 million, I'm going to open multiple Kokomo J's coffee shop music studios. And that drive alone has just has propelled me to not um, to stay busy, to stay focused and stay uh, chasing my dreams. I mean, that's, that's powerful stuff, man. Like not only are you doing it for you, but you're doing it for family. And that's, I mean, that's for my brother. Yeah. And I feel like he's with me. Like, I feel like I got like oh, you yeah. knew me years ago. I wasn't as propelled as I am. I feel like when he, when he died, like part of his mission and thing is living in me. So anytime I get tired, I just keep going. Cause I know he's there and I know I have to do it, you know? Right. And I mean, honestly you do, you, you, we have to keep going for those who we've lost and that's the important thing. And, um, that's why I do this because it, for those who really don't know the backstory, I, I guess I should take a couple minutes to explain it for those who haven't tuned into this before. Um, so back in 2013, I, I conceptualized this idea of, of what was earlier than earlier known as the Open Heart Collective, which was going to be this online interactive book where I would go in and write my story. Jeff could go in and write his. Alex Ferdini, who just joined on Instagram, to go and write his story. But the premise being is in order to get to your page, you have to go through a few others first. But obviously, being a broke kid, I didn't have the money to buy or to create an online interactive book because that's fucking complicated and costs a lot of money. Or at least it would have several years ago. Um, and, that, and then back in March of 2018... I said I was going to do a month of mental health awareness videos. And then I interviewed a good friend of mine, uh, Joel, from uh, the uh, Empower Good podcast, um, who unfortunately, I don't think he's much doing much in the podcast anymore. But anyways, so we uh, in the middle of that first interview, I was like, wait a second. This reminds me a lot of the Open Heart Collective. So mid episode, I changed it to the Open Heart Collective and now... Four, episodes, four seasons and 16 episodes a season later, and now you're double. I've actually, the last two seasons, the 007 numbers have been really, really powerful people. So consider yourself in a class all of your own, man. Yeah, so. I actually put out when you posted, I was like, 007, that totally fits, man, you know? <laughs> I know, that's why I just made that reference now. Um so my older brother was more the James Bond than I ever was, but you know. Yeah. Although I did have a threesome, so <laughs> which is why I connected with Grant. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so now, now you're in this position where you're just building and growing and building and growing and building and growing. Which, when we talk about entrepreneurship, which is another, while this isn't a business podcast because there's millions of them out there. This is a real life human podcast, and we're talking about real life human shit, which just happens to be in this case. We're talk we're going to do a little bit around business because it's in it's your backbone, it's what you're built from, and what you're built to do. So let's just let's just address the already known elephant in the room. Being an entrepreneur sucks in a lot of ways, right? Because you're it. Let me. It is the most challenging yet the most rewarding endeavor that you can possibly go into. Because while you, you have all the control, you have all the control. And for those of you guys who know how I speak, you know what I mean by that. Um, because you, it's all on you, which means it's lonely, which means it's, it's a struggle because oftentimes you're going after things that the people around you, the people that you grew up with, your family, your friends – don't understand unless of course you are blessed to be around a lot of people who are entrepreneurially minded or have the mentors that can then support you to then do it yourself. So one of the things that I've 
I've adored about Jeff since uh, connecting with him has been just this man bleeds passion. Like, I don't know what it is about you, man, but something has just been like, all right, I got to pay attention to this guy. <laughs> and um, so with with that being said, like the drive is there, the passion is there, but what in the midst of growing all the stuff that you've grown, where is those where are those struggle points have happened and what did you do to kind of move beyond that? Okay, this didn't work, so now I've got to try this. This doesn't work, so the the pivot moments, I guess, is what I should call them. What were those for you? Or what have yeah. those done for you up to this point? Because so I know first, you like me to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, first to kind of address the entrepreneurial sucks thing, uh, the reason why I said no is because everything else that I did before really sucked. I worked on other stuff. Like as much as there'll be lonely and challenging parts, this yeah. is what I'm born to do. And when you find your purpose and your passion, like maybe the people it really sucks for, maybe it's really not for them. Cause you really got to know that it's, it's all your fault. You'll have problems on it just cause it's so glamorous right now. You got to know that you, you're, you're meant to actually take it and do it. Right. right. Um, and, and I mean, so here's the thing. The, what's that saying? The definition that Sandy is doing the same thing over and over and expect the same result, right? <laughs> so yep. so what you do as an entrepreneur, as a true entrepreneur, as a businessman, it's all about money and it's all about the marketplace, right? And what you want to do, and here's the thing. Like you said, this is like a, not a business podcast. I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Anybody's mind is like a business. And whatever you feed into it, right, oh. you get you get out of it, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. I just so, say when I, when I made that comment, I was more merely kind of getting to the point where we're not solely focused on the business and the moves and the pivots. It's about the the human that's attached to that. Right. So like so. you you want to hear like the the long lonely nights and the fact that I gave up drink, drinking alcohol and chasing girls and I'm talking to a dude here on a thing when uh when I still have is that what you're talking about? That hurts, man. It hurts not to uh, not to go on as many dates with girls. That's tough. It's the holiday season, and there's. I'm, I'll be honest. This is true. There's the holiday the season. The cupping season sucks, man. <laughs> I, I have I have a Christmas party coming up. My former future wife Caitlin is coming with me. But I have wait, New wait, Year's wait, wait, wait. former future. Yeah, so I wanted to marry her a long time ago. I have this thing with any girl I meet. As soon as I know I like them, I kind of usually tell them I'm gonna marry them pretty soon. Uh, and, uh, and it was worked out great cause I haven't gotten married and that's not really my goal, but, um, but I've only asked one girl truly to marry me, but Caitlin's a really cool girl. She's from Chicago. I actually did a coaching session where her make more money and she actually wanted to become a stripper at scores in Chicago. She has now, um, since dialed down from that. And now she's, um, she's working at a, a nice restaurant, Kava, um, which is actually on my YouTube channel. I, I put that all on there. So she's there too. But um, I feel like you inspire anybody, no matter who they are. But yeah, dude, that's that's probably the loneliest thing is, um, you know, my brother uh, has a girlfriend. You know, all my friends have a girlfriend. Uh, she's she's a friend. We just went to a wedding um, recently. New Year's Eve, though, she can't come with me. So I, I did buy tickets to the Aqua Turf, which is in Sunday. It's a dinner and dance banquet. I love dancing. So that's going to be the toughest thing right now of not finding a girl to go with me uh, on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so that, I, but personally, that's it. Everything else, man, like, yeah, the software, I'm writing a software. There's bugs. It sucks. Um, you know, my real estate investment. Tenants don't have heat, right? But that's good. Right. Man. I have tenants that don't have heat. Like anything else, man, I'm like so happy. Like when, when I have a tenant that calls me at late at night, I'm like, I have someone calling me, which means they're paying me cash flow, which is perfect. You know what I mean? So right. it's all perspective and how you look at it, you know? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just such a hopeless romantic. It's it's tough to uh, cut out the girls and alcohol stuff. I mean, from one HR to another, man, I get you. I get you. Um, but you're in HR? Hopeless romantic. Oh, okay. I, I thought because usually I get in trouble with HR with my mouth. <laughs> no, that's not what I was talking about. That, but that was a fun correlation. Um, <clears throat> so, with actually, I, I I attended a training session this past weekend. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm pretty heavily uh, an advocate of an organization called Hope for the Day. Um, they're a mental health, uh, organization based here in Chicago. They were started, uh, they started in 2011. I have a weird, a similar like connection to businesses that were started in 2011 because that's when I started my record label. Um, 
but Johnny, a uh, fantastic human being, started this organization called Hope for the Day in 2011. Um, but what one of the things that they're really doing right now is going into communities and, and, and different areas and providing mental health education. So I'm in the process right now of actually getting mental health first aid certified. Um, but they've got an organ they've got a coffee shop in Chicago called Sip of Hope where 100% of the proceeds go to support the work that Hope for the Day is doing and that uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is doing. So one of the things that they've or one that I've picked up from them recently has just been the ability to provide education to people and to have the, re the real conversations, to know that everybody's trauma is different, the way that you process trauma is different, the way that it affects your body, it affects your mind is different. So for those of you guys who are struggling and are knowing that the access to resources might be a little bit limited because if you're in that dark moment and you're trying to text that 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 one eight hundred number that let's say all of us know because thanks logic, um, I mean we all know it because of that. Yeah, I called that number right after my older brother passed away. So you know, I, I even though I, I rip all this entrepreneurship, like I've I've been there, man. You know, right? And and I think we all have, and that's the point that I'm trying to make is that no matter where you're at now, we've all been there. It's some mental health is something that affects all of us. Mental illness affects one in five. I mean, I put I put out an article. Um, you you that, suffer from mental illness. Uh, so here's the part that I usually don't go into because this is not my story so much as it's about everybody else's story. But um, I've actually attempted to take my own life four times. Oh, wow. uh, the last time I was 17 going on 18 and it was such a tragic moment that I actually blocked it out for about 10 years. And then when I was 27, it all came rushing back when I was helping a friend of mine um, who was, who had threatened to commit suicide one night. It was, it was February in Northern Illinois when, when she had done that. And, um, uh, I don't know about you guys, but February in Illinois sucks, much like I'm sure February in Connecticut does. Um, because, like, snow, cold, ice, typically not one of those things that you want to walk outside in a hoodie, shorts, and flip-flops, let alone stand out there in a hoodie, shorts, and flip-flops for four hours talking somebody off of a ledge. And that's what I did. And it was the minute that I hang, hung up that phone call – the memory of my last suicide attempt came rushing back. It, and um, yeah, that was almost 10 years ago that it came rushing back. So it's been a, it's been a long journey, but since then it's been like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. People in places and situations have been put into my life from that moment until this moment to say, all right, this is what you're, this is one of the missions that you're here for. So so, so that's kind of your purpose then, right? To help people who uh, are, are like, that's, I think that's your purpose right there, it's right? One, it's one of mine. So I, I like to say that I'm a man of multiple purposes <laughs> because I, I just love the work that I do. And um, anyway, so last week I had put a question and answer thing up on Instagram stories uh, and a good friend of mine, uh, Shri had commented or had made a, a question of what's your 10 year goal. And I'm like, that's a long ass response to a short question and a short clip. So I'm going to write an article about it. And, um, I didn't know what I was going to write the article about until Saturday night. I, so I went to this training in Chicago, uh, in downtown Chicago. And, uh, of and I left that organ. I left that room feeling utterly lit up. There was nothing more prevalent and more present to me than ending suicide. So my ten-year goal is literally to do just that, and I will stop nothing short of that. I'm gonna end. Ten I'm gonna end suicide in ten years. I'm not me, not alone, because I know this is not about. This is not something that I alone can handle. Uh, it's going to take organizations like American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, like NAMI, like Hope for the Day, like any of these other projects, Semicolon, the Trevor Project, all of these other organizations who are on the front lines doing this every single day to get it done. But one of the things that I do know above all else is that if we want to fix this, and if this is something that 
I mean, 800,000 completed suicides every year around the world. That's literally, what is that, 10% of the world's population? When are we going to acknowledge that this is a pandemic? That this is something that affects millions of people? And we need to be able to create resources and access to them. And we need to make sure that those resources are vetted ones and people that aren't and organizations that aren't going to take advantage of people in those weak moments. And we know that there's no amount of legal, federal, legislative involvement that's going to fix the problem. It's going to come on us to do it. So but uh, if I could say something quick. Yeah, absolutely. I think the best way, and it's the way you did it, and this is the secret too, and this is the chain reaction you can start. And I say it is inspire this always, but I think helping somebody else always helps somebody. So I've seen behavioral kids who had mental illness and stuff, and they've turned around and seen a kid struggling, and they've helped them. And just like you said, how you help somebody, like that's one thing. On my dark days, you know, I kind of said, you know, oh, it's dark. Yeah. On my dark days, whenever I'm, I'm struggling, I write down my goals, I get focused on my goals, and then I look for somebody to help whether it's a younger entrepreneur who's interested in the thing. And I think this that's is what I at. wanted to hear. Yeah. That that's where it's at. dude. That's, that's literally like for your whole thing, but even for an entrepreneur, man, like as much as it gets lonely, like the thing is each one, teach one, right. Help someone out and reach someone out. And that will kind of just, it'll re re uh, just, it, it makes you like kind of live again. You know what I mean? I think that's the purpose oh, yeah. of life uh, to everybody. And that's, that's the thing Like you can focus on the numbers of uh, a lot of times too, and you got to be very um, weary of – you're an artist, right? So you're an artist, writer, this, this. You fall into that whole, like, that grunge thing. I'm more of an entrepreneur, businessman, sales guy, right? Well, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, though. I know business all very well, and I've got a lot of numbers written on these boards and that board over there that are all – like, I'm a strategy guy at the end of the day. I take shit apart and build it. That's what I do. When it comes to like the day to day operations of the businesses that I run, I'm an architect. I'm a builder. I work with people and I create these cohesive strategies that are all about how your brand is being portrayed and how you're best going to grow it. So don't get me wrong, I am that entrepreneur spirit, but I'm also that creative. So I sit, I, 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 I ride the fence on that one. I have the ability to fall either way, depending on the day. All right. So, yeah. no, that's yeah. good. But yeah, I just, I just think like, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. You know, when you, when you do help somebody else out, right. Um, it kind of just, it kind of relives even like multi-billionaires like Grant, you know who Grant Cardone is obviously, right? Yeah. So I've got a funny story about Grant, but we're not there yet in the conversation. <laughs> well, you, you can tell anyone, but I, I, I was just at the boot camp with them and for the guy to, you know, show that he cares or other multi-billionaires, like certain stuff that they do. And yeah, they always try and sell everything too, right? People oh yeah. But, but where they get the life out of it is when they help somebody, right? You know, mm -hmm. like, and you see it time and time again. Um, and I just think, well, I know, I know that's the thing. Like my whole inspire, like I want to change the education system because I do think a lot of mental uh, awareness and certain things you're touching on is mm -hmm. something that you can really teach. Like we had therapies at my school, but it wasn't, it was portrayed wrong. I think there's a way with YouTube actually that I want to change the education system. And uh, do you know who Bradley is? The name sounds familiar. I don't he know. The big know virtual him training, but I thing. know of him. But we're gonna. He's gonna be on my Make More Money podcast. We're gonna do huh. something about changing the education system uh, together uh, pretty soon. So that'll that'll be in two years. But there's the big part of uh, really just listening to people and letting them talk because I, my brother, Josh Lewis growth, he went through a lot of, he does a lot of videos on anxiety and uh, mental and stuff like that. He would actually be a perfect mm -hmm. guest for this because he's, he Absolutely. had to overcome a lot, you know? Absolutely. And that, and that's just the thing too. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, we're entrepreneurs, we're creatives, we're musicians, we're artists, we're, we're, but the base of it all is that we're human. And this is just that. I mean, this is, I mean, Jeff and I are just humans talking. We're having a conversation. We're sharing our story with the goal to give as much information to you guys in the way that you need to take it for you, right? Because a lot of the world that we live in right now with, with social media and with, with content creators is the value lies with the person creating the content, right? Because these guys will create these posts to an extent, not saying everybody, but some of them will create this content knowing that this is what they want you to take from it. This uh, this show is live and raw because where you take the value from it 
is up to you. What of whatever Jeff, whatever Jeff says, or what moments that I say throughout this episode are just that they are moments that we've lived that we've experienced that we've had to go through to get to where we are now. So if you are in those moments that feel or look or are like hard, then you know how to effectively navigate that for you. But at the end of the day, the show is still in its raw real life form. It's not like it's going to edit down to a five minute, like Buzzfeed type clip that will allow you to say, all right, this is what I need to see. No, you got to go through it because in order for you to go through it, then you can get to the other side. You can actually adapt something. So to to my to the Grant Cardone piece. I'm not a huge guy on motivation I'm, because I, I, I have a lot inside of me and I don't necessarily need it from external sources. But when I started this show back in March of last year, for me it was I wanted to help one person with each episode. I wanted to touch one person's life to the point where they could make their life better. And then I listened to the 10X rule. And then it was like, well, fuck, I've been underselling the show. And now it's like, huh, I've got to get everybody in the world to know what this show is. Because then when we get everybody knowing what this in the world knowing what this show is, then we're all having these raw real life conversations. We're all creating safe spaces within our own in real life communities and our digital communities that then turn around and allow us to actually infect or implement and affect change. So when I listen to the 10X rule of the summer, I'm like, I've been doing this podcasting thing all wrong. Yeah, it's funny because you know you listen to the book, the Ten X Rule, which is a whole movement now, and people, mm-hmm. um, people uh, take it in different ways, right? I, I listen to it and it's like, man, I've been doing my life the whole wrong <laughs> way. Wrong. I've been under underachieving, you know, and uh, especially with my money goals. Like, um, I never had money goals, you know, and I think for anybody in life, no matter where you're at, um, money's very important, you know. Um, oh yeah. So, and that's kind of what I preach all the time. And I just think uh, that's why I started the Make More Money podcast because I just want to give people hope that they can, no matter where they are, where they come from, they can uh, make more money. Because it's it's if you live in America, uh, it's it's not as hard as you think. You know, you just kind of go out and go out there and do work. You know, and, and get right. Right. And and it, all of this is about going out there and just doing it in whatever way works best for you. And whatever way it works best for your community, because what works for Jeff or what works for me may not work for you, but you can take pieces of it. You can take fragments of it and apply it to your life and test it. And 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 if it's a business that you want, I'm sure like Jeff and I both want to talk. Like if it's, but if you're also if you're needing to connect just as a human, like that, that's literally why my cell phone number is in my Instagram profile because I want people to reach out to me. I want people to connect with me because when I can help them, even if it, even if it's business, if it's personal, if it's, if they're like, I just need somebody to listen. Cool. I'm here because I want people to know that no matter what level or where, how inaccessible a lot of people on social media are, that I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people that you can reach out to and and that you can ask for help or you can just say, Hey, I need you to listen. And when it is about mental health, when we are having those conversations, more often than not, the people that we're talking to, the ones that are struggling, they don't want advice. They just want to know that there's a person on the other end of the line that gives a fuck. Well, here, let me ask you this question. This, yeah. is, this is what I do in my coaching sessions. Do you think people care or people don't care? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Well, um, yeah. I think as, as a populace, we care. Uh, generally speaking, in the world, we care. But I think it has become socially accepted to be reactive about that level of care than proactive with it. Okay. So, so, so meaning somebody um, – a recent personal example um, – Several a few weeks ago, a good uh, a former friend and colleague of mine uh, passed away from a drug overdose. I started to get eaten alive in the fact that I thought I did something wrong, that I could have done more, that I felt guilt, right? Okay. So, but at the end of the day, I know that there was nothing that I could have done that would have necessarily changed the situation, right? Because the only thing that I could have done was be there more than I was. But even then, that might not have helped. So for me, I think it is, we do as humans care. Now, 
there, as they say, there's a few bad apples can ruin a bunch, right? So there are people that that honestly don't care. I, it, it, it's it's the human condition. So some of us do, some of us don't. So that, and then you're exactly right with that. And whichever answer you said would be right. And this way, I do on my coaching right. sessions for anybody listening. Whatever you believe, you believe people will care. You will find the people who care. If you believe people don't care, you will find the people who don't care. And this is the the spirit of optimism and where you're at. I challenge any one of the people I've coached to go out and just say and believe people care, and you'll know this person opening the door and going through it. And it's changed lives that alone right there. Okay. Oh yeah. And I know absolutely. Tony Romans. Uh, T- Tony Robbins has done something. Tony like Roman. That. Yeah, he's done a, a few things like that, but um, but I do think um, that's that's the biggest thing. People do care, and it, it's, oh, yeah. it's whatever you want to say. And like when my brother passed away, I told every single person. Everybody asked me, "No, not okay." My brother passed away, and I got out. My my younger brother kept an internal, and he went through a lot more mental stuff because he kept an internal. Me, I knew I would go insane if I did, so I got it out right. And I right. think a lot of people too would do beneficial if they actually get it out. But a lot of people won't get it out because they believe people don't care. And listen, there's some people who don't care, but I just need people to listen. I would just talk anyway, man. And I didn't care if they didn't care because I knew it was good for me. And like, but I think that's okay though. I think that's okay for oh, you to do. See, that's, that's the great thing, right? Because oftentimes people, we, we, we victimize these people who are suffering. We victimize these people who are struggling, who do need help. And at the end of the day, and I'm going to quote hope for the day on this one, it's okay to not to be, it's okay not to be okay. Right? Like you don't have to be at 100% all the time and that's okay. Now for those of us who are at a certain level where we hold ourselves to a certain level of accountability, like myself yesterday, I had a fucking shitty day for no reason. Business is good. Business is booming relationships are like everything is where it needs to be. My health is getting back to where it's need to be. I literally just woke up on the wrong side of the bed twice. Once after once when my, I woke up to get my kids ready for school. And next when I woke back up because I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to go to sleep for a little bit. They happen, but it's okay not to be okay. <laughs> is, is I guess the point that I'm trying to make with that. Yeah. And that, it's normal. You don't have to freak out or think I did a video. If you feel lost on YouTube, I was kind of paramount of what Grant Cardone did even a better one. I did it right after I came out of the uh, 10X uh, boot camp, thinking I knew a lot about business. I was surrounded by a bunch of multimillionaires trying right. to grow my software post flow, which is a lead generation business. And then realized how far away I was from everything. Right. And um, <laughs> well, that's fun when you realize that, isn't it? Yeah, but no, it's see where I have a little bit more strength and even though I have this and I, I, this is not to be anywhere any more than it is. It's just where I'm at. Um, right. I don't know how people do it. Like, do you believe in anything? Do you believe there's a higher power? Oh yeah. So like, I'm a Jesus guy, right? I believe in Jesus, right? That's what right. I teach you all things. And the, the, the reason why, and this is what I tell everybody, believe in something. Because once you believe in nothing and you're alone in those days, then you really have nothing to go to, right? So right. everybody's having those days. When you have something that you believe in, that you believe that no matter what happens, um, when you die, you know, you'll, you'll have everlasting life and, and all the things, whether or not it's true or not, and you want to fight it and all. I, there, my former future wife, she believed in the universe, right? So I used to pray, dear universe, help us out. Anybody, when someone dies, how many times have you heard someone say, oh, I'll pray for you. I'll keep you in my prayers, right? Uh-huh. All the and they might not be Christian or, or, or religious or anything like that, right? But yep. um, but that people say it because there, there's that something, it's that way of feeling. There's power in prayer, man. Anytime oh, anybody's absolutely. lost there, dude, and there's power in the name Jesus. Like, that's the one thing um, that, like, if it, I, it's the only word they use as a curse word, right? They don't use Muhammad as a curse word or anything. So there's something in that name. I've been around, like, some demonic stuff where I've said that name. Like, so, and I, 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 I there was a time when I didn't want to believe the Lord at all. Um, but it, it's paramount to who I am. And people are like, man, this guy's talking about three subs to Jesus at the same time. But, you know, the, the Lord, the Lord made me good looking. So, you know. Well, and, and see, that's the other thing, too, is you were made with choice, right? Okay. You you were made with the ability to make a decision on your own. And that, I mean, I am blessed to say that the world that we live in right now is a world that where we can do this kind of stuff. Where two guys that haven't met each other in person can connect on a, connect on a social media platform, build a relationship, and then have a raw, real conversation. Like, I'm a big believer in the fact that there everything in this world has a, a cause and effect, has a belief factor behind it. Because... For me, 
while my relationship with a church has struggled, my relationship and my faith has never been stronger. I like your table on Instagram, by the way. <laughs> my what? Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to flip. I forgot. It's- I was going to share this feed to a lot of people, but I'm stuck on the, the keyboard thing and I can't get out of it. A lot of technical uh, things. Technical here. glitches. Scroll yeah, down. Share with all my friends. Yeah. Scroll down. I'm trying. It's all not working here. We're just, unless I exit out and go back in, which I could do. Well, I mean, we're in it. Kill the hour. Take that would kill it. And by the way, for all of you guys, I just want to share this you. How long you can go live on Instagram for? It is 60 minutes and then they will boot your ass off. Trust me, I've been there. Um, I'll be flowing with a conversation, then all of a sudden <laughs> it goes away. But um, oh, there we go. So yeah, we're on we're on Facebook, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I can't I can't um, turn this around now because I'm locked in the keyboard. So we'll just do it this way for the rest. That, kinda- that, 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 that's interesting though because you should be able to just go to your upper left hand corner of your Instagram screen. Yeah, and, and hit the little like reverse arrow button and it should pop back so yeah it's not really there oh wait there you go oh i had to hit my logo there we go oh wow although i like the two of you okay now i can share this with everybody that that, that, that was weird to me though it was just like oh, okay that but anyway um hell so i mean we're gonna get to the point now where it's like all right i want to hear what is the number one most exciting thing in your world right now uh, my software, PostFlow, that's coming out. It's uh, We just got Facebook, Instagram, uh, API. We're going nice. to be able to use it to work for JC Tanati. I work for a local multimillionaire named JC Tanati. He does uh, doors and windows. And I slowly built this software to just help him uh, make more money and get more leads. And uh, yeah. it looks you like got really quiet on Instagram. Stuff. And I just got quiet. invited to uh, pitch it. At, um, oh, did I go I out of here? I can't hear you over here. Did I, I can't hear you on Instagram. Here? This is so weird. Instagram, Instagram was cut out. I, I have you on the other feed, but not on Instagram. We were doing good before. We were. Oh, man. Technology. So I've turned it up on here. Hang on, let me see. I think it was because I was... I, I messed up the Instagram. Oh, it's all glitched out now. Here, let me do this. Um, we can kill the Instagram feed. Yeah, we can kill and join again, actually. Well, let's just end this and that now. And just do the story. And we'll just finish the rest here because we only got a couple more. A couple more that was minutes. weird. It just came back. All right. So go ahead. Yeah, I don't need this. No, yeah. So we're, we're, we'll are we're just wrap it up here. Uh, we were going to get kicked off of there in a couple minutes anyway. So, um, so yeah, you were saying your software company, getting that up, to, up and off the ground. So... You said lead gen, you mentioned JC. So give us a little bit more of like that. When is it coming out? Like who is it directed for, towards? Like who can be a part of it? That kind of thing. Yeah, it's directed to um, social media agencies kind of. We're similar okay. to like um, um, Hood Suite and anything. I, I, I always wrote software. Actually, once we finish here, I'm going to work back on it. Uh, I'm actually going to send out a, a thing to um, – to, uh, jo- Brandon Dawson's son, Josh Dawson, who's uh, mm-hmm. asking me to help uh, pitch it at the 10X Growth Town if it's ready. Hopefully, it'll be ready by February. And then nice. we need to get a bunch of um, – to get Facebook partnership, we need – this is what I need help with. We need uh, agencies that have clients that are spending over a thousand dollars worth of Facebook ads. Cause although we have Facebook's API, um, mm-hmm. to get partnership, you need to be spending thousands of dollars to partner. Right. But we'll, we'll do it. Cause I, that's all I do is do stuff that they're challenging. Yeah. So. Well, you'll have, you will, we'll have to take this conversation off air because I happen to be with one of those agencies that is working with clients that are spending that. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. So yeah, so we'll maybe do like a beta testing or something like that. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely excited about. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot more, man. I, I have a new YouTube video coming out tomorrow. I think it's when I'm Miami doing one of those raw talks. I've actually, it's funny that this is the Open Heart Collective because now uh, people told me, Jeff, we like your passion. You're all going. If we just hear you, just be normal. So now I'm just posting some videos, just be normal. So but I'm I really. Mean- I understand because there are there are videos like this where it's like very even, very like not like super like up here. And then there are the videos where I'm up here and I love those too. So it's having the ability to kind of go through both sides of that and have it be 
one experience, no matter where people are experiencing it. Yeah, no, trust me. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I get, it. I'm always dude. I, I don't, I try not to be negative. I try not to, um, to think of anything bad. Like I really try, I mean, it happens and you're going to be there and let, let oh, me yeah, ask, it happens. because of this, I don't really touch on this side. This way it's cool. Have you ever called the suicide prevention line? The, my, my last suicide attempt was before it came out. Okay. So no, I mean, I've tested it with a couple, I mean, I like I've dialed into it just to kind of see the interaction, but I've talked to a lot of people who have been on it within the last couple of years. And one of the things that I know that I talked to about with hope for the day was just the amount of wait time that you have to have to go through. So that's one of my things. I called it after my brother passed away and I called it just cause I wanted someone to talk to, but I, again, it was a good thing. I wasn't really too serious about killing myself because that person didn't do anything to inspire me or help me off. They were monotone. They were all that, you know, like, I think you need, uh, uh, like, I think you need someone who's kind of inspiring and helping, you know, well, like he- here's the deal with how that this whole system is working right now. Yeah. A lot of it is all volunteer based. Yeah, I felt that way. You see, that's why money is so important. You got to pay people, man. You see, right. That's that's my biggest thing. Like end of story. As long as people aren't doing drugs. You, do you do any drugs? No. All right. As long as people aren't doing drugs, right? I should say in, until January when uh, marijuana is legal in Illinois. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. Dude, even this is why I'm a big grant guy, right? Because my bro- older brother, he started doing marijuana and everything. It slows you right. down from your full potential. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool and all stuff like that. I did CBD when I was in Miami at the Growth Con when I met a stripper and I was sleeping in bed <laughs> preaching a dog with allergies and her, right? And uh, and that's it's a true story. And I felt literally like I was comatose, but my mind was still going. And I was like, man, this ain't for me, man. I, this stuff, I don't know. I'm sure it helps out people. And that's fine. Right. Uh, people ask me to invest money into it all the time. I just think what you got to do, man, is you got to realize what your passion is. Realize that you, once your mindset, you're right. And this is the part you're focused on. Once your mindset is good, right? And you're good. And I think by, a lot of by feeding it and the people you're around, feeding it with the right books in your mind, audio books, good YouTube videos, all that stuff, feeding it, then pursue it and get in a skill that'll make you money, pursue your dream. Everybody right. has dreams here. Anybody can achieve them. It's just mm-hmm. how much you want to work on them and go for it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. And, and and even if you don't get the dream, the pursuit of the dream, you'll be some, like, I never became an NFL quarterback, but that me playing quarterback when I never played before gave me more confidence to now open a business, you know, and then, like stuff that I've done, you know? Right. It's, so and I just, that's the great thing. There's no one way to do it. There's no one singular driving force other than you. And what, what Jeff is doing is different than what I'm doing. But the great thing is, is we're humans and we can come together in the times when we need to and we can leverage resources and we can leverage conversation and being humans with one another. But we can also get down to business and make money and and have that be a duality of our existence without it being something that has to have some ulterior motive or, or Jeff is only doing this because this is going to get him here. Like, that's great. But what are we going to do for the ones that actually need it? Yeah, I think the mission, just as long as it's inspire others always, which mine is, like if anybody comes on here and everything, it's like that's it, man. That's the end, end game right there. Inspire others always, you know? Uh, Absolutely, man. So, I mean, I think it's more said than that. You know, people, if you have a good product, people will pay for it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that that's just – if you have a good product and people and and you can do right by the people that your product is directed towards, you have no other choice but to win. It's when you start to get in – like I, I've always said this business is easy. We fuck it up as humans. We fuck it up. So it's because at the end of the day, when, when we're talking business, it's about, and and others say this too, it's about giving value and receiving payment, right. And receiving value back. That's as easy as it gets. But well, how, how do you define value? Oh, that, that, that's the bigger question. And that, that's, it, the reason why I say this is because you don't. Everybody defines that value differently. Right. But everybody that's what can put a price on money. See? So that's why money is the most important thing that people can focus on because then you can trade money for what you value. You see? I'll agree with that. I'll concur. I mean, and everybody's is a little bit different, right? I like money. 
I fought with money for a long time. How, how do you with money? Well, that's a long conversation to take off air, but um, it was it was all mindset, right? Because it was, and and here's the biggest thing for me when it came when it comes to money, right? When I started my record label eight years ago, it was all very the mindset wasn't there. Like I never, I started it with no money, right? Because, and then it was always about just being the scrappy underdog, being the guy that's just going to fight and fight and fight and fight. And then it was like, wait a second, I'm doing this wrong. And, and then it was, once that switch happened, now I've got investors wanting to have talks. I've got bigger partners wanting to come on board. The team is growing. All of this other stuff starts happening. So, yeah, so that was the first thing. Like the reason why I'm not opening Kokomo J's right now is because I could open it, but it would be the scrappy under. I would be that, right? Right. I was aware enough to feel like I need to make money first, do what I don't like, right? Like I don't really love selling windows and doors, right? But it makes a lot of money, right? So then I can invest it in my software. And then, right. So like money, like that's the thing. Focus on the money first. Work hard, get dirty, save it up, be smart with your money. Don't spend more than you need. Minimize. Right. I sold bed dude you know i sold my bed i live on a futon right now that keeps me away from sleeping with the girls you know so they don't want to sleep on like that so i got all right. plan, you know so right right but no man um so we're we've reached our time so any one last word of wisdom or statement of power that you want to want to leave us with yeah, just no matter where you are, no matter what you've been told, uh, make sure you uh, know who you're listening to and look at where they're at. And if you want to be where they're at, then listen to them. And if they're not, listen to them and don't do what they do. It's that simple. You know, I talked, there's a video on YouTube of me talking to a homeless guy. And uh, and a lot of times it's don't do what he does to become homeless, you know, and, and, and really right. just make yourself better people. And do that. So if you want to be, you know, music record label, surround yourself with people like that. Go from a level of service to to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm at right now, learning from JC Tanati right now. And I'm right. just there for service, just to learn and grow his business now. And he's teaching me how to raise a multi million dollar business, you know. And that's the great thing too. So I, I wholly agree with that, my man. Um, all right, guys. So we are going to wrap up this episode for now. This has been the seventh episode of the fourth season of the Open Heart Collective, and we are going to keep this thing going until I no longer have a voice to do it, and then I'm going to pay somebody to do it for me because this mission never ends until suicide does. But in the meantime, I'm going to end it on the little mantra that I've ended every single piece of video content that I've put out for a long time now, and it is as follows. Number one is find happiness in every single day in your way. Find it. Number two is have fun because, as we know, Life is way too short to do anything that is at least not fun at least once a day, right? I try to strive to do everything in my life is fun. And then last but certainly not least, work. Because everything and, every, everything and anything that's worth it in this life takes blood, sweat, and tears level of effort. And along the way, and this is the thing that I will stress all the time, along the way it's important to breathe. Even if you just say that word breathe once a day, it does that really cool thing where it forces you to do the action that it's, that you're saying. So that is it, my friends. We will be back next week and every other week thereafter, except for holiday weeks. But that's a whole other story.